today I'm working on my 8830 M3. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about converting from R12 to R134A. I just swapped in a parallel flow condenser to work with R134A. <coughs> I put in uh, new AC lines, R134A. I also put in, let's get the light here. A used condenser, but, uh, sorry, compressor, low mileage though. And uh, basically changed out the evaporator in the interior. Sorry, not the evaporator, the expansion valve. And, uh, I'm at the point now where I'm going to be uh, dealing with the dryer. So I want to talk a little bit about the differences between R12 dryers, or at least on an E30 M3 or early production E30. This is my original uh, dryer. It's actually one I bought, but it turned out to be wrong. It has a provision for a high pressure switch and a low pressure switch on the side, right? And it has a Schrader valve on the top. So, in part, uh, to do the R134A conversion properly, you need to purchase an R134A rated pressure switch. This is a single pressure switch that actually controls both high pressure and low pressure. So, if there's enough low pressure in there, it will activate the switch. But if there's too much pressure, then it will turn, you know, deactivate the switch. So basically, the factory setup. This is the high pressure switch. It has this spade, these two spade connectors on the end. That threads into the side of the inside of the receiver dryer accumulator. This is your low pressure switch, and it actually has two spade connectors. They're actually in, inside this that on an E30 M3 or probably most E30s you'll have black and yellow and black and red okay they go to this switch and then on the car you'll find this harness here for the high pressure switch so that's what a R12 dryer looks like you know you could use it with R12 but you can't use it with 134A if you do that then your high pressure switch is going to be prematurely activated and it's going to cut out all the time. Uh, that's my original tube and fin condenser over there. It's not efficient enough to re remove uh, heat and the pressure will be too high causing you to uh, constantly kick off the compressor. It won't work effectively. So I got the appropriate uh, dryer. If you look up like a 1990 model it will actually naturally come with this from the factory. They went for, to a single switch setup, but they went with this type of switch, but it was still lower pressure. It was rated for R12. So here is the proper the proper dryer. So now you just have this little port on the side and then this switch threads onto it. Okay. That lives down in the engine bay. Down over here. So you got your two lines going to it. What you gotta do is actually this connector here was going up to the front of the car. That connector there, I cut it off and I wired in a new plug to work with that pressure switch that I got, the appropriate type of plug. So you got this type of connector, you have to cut that and wire in this type of connector. Um, you can find them online. They, met, they made up to this, that connector made up to this pressure switch, right? So I cut that off. Then there's another harness. There's another harness that leads around here, coming from the front that had this guy on it for the low pressure switch what you got to do is cut the, the ends off that and just 
uh, twist them all together, solder them, and heat shrink and seal that off, and then just tuck it away underneath your headlight. So you've effectively bypassed the low pressure switch altogether. It's no longer part of the equation. Now you just have the high pressure cut out that has the provision for low and high pressure. So if there's not enough pressure, this is going to be open. If there's too much press pressure, it's going to be open again. So it's a dual function switch, so you don't need the two switches. And this is the only way to get to 134A rated pressures. So to do this conversion properly, on an S14 uh, E30 M3, you need to get an R134A rated com uh, compressor. There was never a compressor from the factory that was rated for um, uh, R12, I mean for 134A. It was either R12 or you had to get this conversion kit. It comes with a new block uh, plate to mount it. So it's a little bit different than factory, but that is a factory part. So you gotta do that, and you're supposed to change your AC lines. I just did it because I wanted to update, because this is a, a proper R134A AC line. This is a conversion line, it has the proper fitting on it. From the factory, they they put the actual port up here, and when you try to put one of those R12 adapters, you can't close your hood. So you need to get this line. And um, it even comes with a high pressure fitting right here. See? So that's a proper conversion. I changed those lines. I changed the compressor, 134A bracket with the appropriate compressor. I changed my expansion valve, rated for 134A uh, pressures. Changed the condenser now, moved off of this uh, R12 con condenser. And as I said, swapped in a proper 134A parallel condenser it's rated to remove a lot more heat um, so I've basically covered all my bases here I, I bought a set of manifold gauges and a vacuum pump I'm going to install this uh, proper accumulator onto the car put the lines onto it thread out my switch and then I'm going to put it under a vacuum so I'll show you guys that yeah, got it all mounted. Got the new pressure switch on there. So it's time to pull a vacuum on it. I got these manifold gauges from Harbor Freight. Not the best quality, but you know, for the oddball time you're going to use it, it'll be fine. So I'm going to open these two guys up, set it all up, and then pull a vacuum on it. Okay, I got the Harbor Freight vacuum pump set up. Boiled it up. Got the gauge pack set up. So we're going to open up these valves. vacuum and run for about 45 minutes to boil out any moisture in the system and if all that checks out then uh, I'll let it sit for about 45 minutes just to ensure we're in good shape leak free maybe I'll let it sit for an hour just to be sure and then uh, I'll show you guys when I'm charging it up and then we'll check the temp vent temperature is converted to 134 so I've done everything. My my auxiliary fan was in good shape still, but I changed everything to be like proper 134A. So hopefully I can have vent temperatures around the 40 degree mark if all checks out. I'm in Houston. Ambient temps around this time of year are in the low to mid 90s, so it's kind of a must to have AC on this car. Yeah. 45 minutes are up gone too close to negative 30 I guess is the uh, inches of mercury so before anything gonna close these up that'll block off this port so we can shut off the pump and 
I'm gonna let this sit. I'll probably let this sit overnight. See where we stand tomorrow, just to be 100% sure that we can hold a good vacuum and I'm leak free. Okay, did the vacuuming. And now, under vacuum, I got my charge can connected. This is actually a 19 ounce can, but it has 3 ounces of additive. I believe. Yeah, so it's actually 16 ounces of actual charge. And then I have a 12 ounce can. This system is supposed to take 28 ounces total for an ideal charge. So we're going to start the car up, put the AC on, and open up the low side pressure port. Open up the low side port now to start the charge. The compressor should kick on. Once enough pressure has been detected. There you go. The compressor just kicked on. Thank you. 